Within a heartbeat of the allegations against Russell Brand being made public, and shortly after Brand himself denied them and claimed he was being targeted as part of a coordinated political attack. Very serious allegations that I absolutely refute. The relationships I had were absolutely always consensual. Is there another agenda at play? particularly when we've seen coordinated media attacks before. The legacy media rushed out to assert that anyone claiming this was part of a coordinated political attack was a disgusting conspiracy theorist. How conspiracists jumped to defend Russell Brand before allegations were even made. Russell Brand's sexual assault allegations countered with conspiracy theories. Russell Brand is not a martyr and the claims against him are not a conspiracy. And guess what? All of these claims are coming from left-leaning sources. I actually have been quite alarmed by some of the response to this. This is not about Russell Brand's YouTube show. Well, that hasn't aged very well, has it? Now the political class, literally the government, is pressuring social media networks and video hosting websites to demonetize and delete brands' content entirely. After they got YouTube to cave pretty quickly by demonetizing brands' channel, Dame Caroline Dynage, the Tory chair of the Commons Culture, Media and Sport Committee, a government body, fired off letters to TikTok, Facebook, Twitter and Rumble, demanding to know what action they were taking to demonetize or remove brands' videos. This wasn't a coordinated political attack to eliminate Bran from the public square. Oh no, who'd be stupid enough to believe that? Proceeds to carry out coordinated political attack to remove Bran from the public square. They complain about conspiracy theorists rushing to Bran's defence. Then do the very thing that proves the conspiracy theorists right. Again, this is what we mean when we call it the censorship industrial complex. This isn't just private companies enforcing their terms of service. This is governments abusing their authority to pressure those companies to silence and punish free speech. Rumble responded within about five minutes telling Dynage and the government to F off. Dynage wrote to the video platform on Wednesday to say she was concerned that the comedian may be profiting from his content on the platform. Rumble responded, we regard it as deeply inappropriate and dangerous that the UK Parliament would attempt to control who is allowed to speak on our platform or to earn a living from doing so. Singling out an individual and demanding his ban is even more disturbing given the absence of any connection between the allegations and his content on Rumble. We don't agree with the behaviour of many Rumble creators, but we refuse to penalise them for actions that have nothing to do with our platform. Although it may be politically and socially easier for Rumble to join a cancel culture mob, doing so would be a violation of our company's values and mission. We emphatically reject the UK Parliament's demands. In other words, spin on it. Amidst all this, the same media that screamed until they were blue in the face that this was about the alleged victims, the seriousness of the accusations against Brand, and that it had absolutely nothing to do with Brand speaking out against the war in Ukraine or Big Pharma. Nothing whatsoever to do with the content he was putting out on all these different platforms. Then proceeded to immediately exploit the outrage to get brand removed from all these different platforms. Oh, it's not political though. It's not about deplatforming. A typical example was this BBC reporter. Remember, taxpayer funded, desperately trying to contact all these platforms, piling on the pressure to get brand pulled. Getting through to big companies like Amazon's Audible or Apple Podcasts is no easy task. I wanted to find out if they are keeping or removing any Russell Brand interviews, podcasts or audiobooks. I called an email, but so far received no reply. I called an email, why won't they respond? Oh yeah, she was just doing it to find out. Just doing a journalism. That's not journalism, that's abusing the position of being a journalist, abusing the power of the BBC to lobby to get someone deplatformed. YouTube and the BBC have already pulled brands' content from their platforms for failing to meet expectations. And again, the left is all over this. But there's no coordinated media slash political attack against brand. Honest, they couldn't possibly be trying to control the narrative. Nowhere can we see this more clearly than on ground news. An independent startup working to hold media accountable. Let's look closer at the story on Rumble's response to Parliament. It's covered primarily by right-leaning sources, a big blind spot for the left in the case of free speech. And Ground News even summarises the media spin. The left focuses on Rumble's critique of Parliament, while the right highlights the implications for creators if this kind of censorship is allowed to continue. You can read more at ground.news pjw. Ground News combines all sides of every story in one place, so we can see right through mainstream media bias. I'm glad to partner with them for this video because you know it's going to get demonetized, and I think what they're doing is more important than ever. So check it out at ground.news 
slash PJW and subscribe for 30% off unlimited access to support access to reliable information and holding the media accountable. Just today they published another article whining about how Brand started getting way more viewers on YouTube after he abandoned left-wing political causes. But it has nothing to do with his politics, honest. The government's even lobbying to get Bev Turner, a GB News presenter, fired because she dared say Brand is entitled to the presumption of innocence. I was quiet on the Brand stuff, but now that the British government is directly influencing social media companies to demonetize him when no criminal trial at all has taken place proves that this was never about justice for victims, it was about control. They just needed an excuse. This was never about Russell Brand. This was a political pretext so governments across the world could coordinate with social media companies to acquire total control over dissenting voices on the internet. So the UK government is petitioning private companies based in other countries to take money off one of its citizens on the basis of unsubstantiated allegations. This is just insane level of targeted cancellation. Dynage has directly violated the Magna Carta, by the way, and should resign immediately. Her husband was also deputy commander of the 77th Brigade, Intel Unit, which spied on social media users in the UK who dissented against lockdown and the jab. None of this is political, though. Just trust us, bro. We've apparently now defaulted to the moral and legal standard of the Salem Witch Trials, where accusation alone is enough to prove your guilt and have you convicted in the court of public opinion. Sod due process. Sod innocent until proven guilty. And the witch finder generals are activist journalists and government officials who decry all accusations that they're targeting Brand for his political opinions as ludicrous and harmful, while literally spending every waking moment targeting Brand for his political opinions and weaponizing the might of the media, cultural institutions, and literally the government to get him permanently silenced and shut down. Oh, it's not political though. Strange, isn't it, how all these claims against Brand were apparently an open secret in the industry, known to BBC, known to Channel 4, and yet for the best part of 20 years, when Brand was the darling of the left, amplifying their messaging, cozying up to their ideologues, giving platforms to their political candidates, none of it came out. This on the surface would have been a far bigger scandal when Brand was at the height of his fame, which was about 10 years ago when he was a staunch lefty. But it only emerges now after he undergoes a political conversion and starts talking about the jibby jab and opposing regime wars. A fascinating coincidence, I'm sure you'll agree. Fascinating how part of the motivation for the claims being reported to the media, according to the Sunday Times, were because of what Brand was saying on his YouTube channel. It's definitely nothing to do with Brand's political opinions though. Only a deranged conspiracy theorist would think that. Fascinating how this is all happening during the passage of the online safety bill, which gives the government the power to censor free speech it deems to be disinformation in the name of national security, while regime sycophants give UN speeches asserting that challenging state and media narratives is literally an act of war. Miss and disinformation online. But we have an opportunity here to ensure that these particular weapons of war do not become an established part of warfare. And that censoring free speech is vital to protect free speech. Even the most light touch approaches to disinformation could be misinterpreted as being hostile to the values of free speech that we value so highly. Only the truly naive or deliberately duplicitous could ever believe that this is only about whatever Russell Brand is alleged to have done over a decade ago. Get early access to videos, exclusive live streams, and personally DM me. You've seen how much I get demonetized all the time. Well, this is how you support me. By subscribing at pauljosephwatson.locals.com. Please click the link in the description.